Yeah, so, so that's where it really ends. So, yeah, I see what you mean. Okay, any other questions? Okay, here we go. I always get confused. The mandibular branch of the cranium of five goes through the forum of spinosum, right? Uh, no. I, I don't understand exactly why you think that. There's a lot of people get that confused. I used to get that confused quite a lot. It's probably best to bring up. Let's go back to the cranial base, the middle cranial fossa. Here we go. I understand why people get that confused. I used to get that confused all the time. The problem is that you're thinking a bit too logically here. If you think of the trigeminal nerve, number five, right, it gives us three branches, right? Wait, let, let me get a close up zoom up picture of this, of the middle cranial fossa. Here we go. I think that's a better picture. That bit there zoomed in, right? So, so you can just so you can see this a lot more clearer. The trigeminal nerve gives us three branches, right? It gives ophthalmic, it gives off the maxillary, it gives off the mandibular branch, and that's it branches before it even goes through any of the foramens and leaving the cranial base. So you would assume that in the middle cranial fossa, the three holes that are lying above near the trigeminal nerve, you would assume that they both they just leave through these three holes in that fashion as they come out. So you would mentally picture the ophthalmic nerve leaving through the first hole, then the bacterial branch leaving through the second hole, and then the mandibular branch through the third hole. And that's not the case. So the ophthalmic branch doesn't leave through foramen rotundum. And the trick to remember that is, is to think, don't just learn a paraphrase, just think what does, what's the intention of each nerve? Where is it going to? Obviously, they've got their afferent and efferent sensory and motor functions. But if we just look at it inside the name, you know, the first branch of the trigeminal nerve is the ophthalmic branch. It would make sense if it leaves somewhere close to the eye, which would be the superior orbital fissure. So if you think of it that way, you can mentally shift that image that you have of the three branches coming down slightly anteriorly. So you've got superior orbital fissure there, which is where the ophthalmic nerve will leave through. Then obviously moving down to the foramen rotundum, you can see why that's where the maxillary branch leaves through. And then again following suit, one below that, the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve leads to the foramen ovale, which kind of leaves us foramen spinosum as this like mystery hole that people always get confused about. Now, you know, the foramen spinosum, if you look carefully, you know, it's located posterior laterally on the greater wing of the spinal bone. Posterior laterally, I mean in relation to the foramen ovale, right? It's a strange one and people get this confused all the time because normally you picture things leaving leaving the cranial base. This is an odd one because nerve enters the cranial base through here. So, and it's always just confusing because the mandibular branch of the, the trigeminal nerve, when it leaves through the foramen of valley, it gives off a small little branch that comes up. It's called like a recurrent branch that comes up into the foramen spinosum and it's known as the nervous spinosus. It comes back into the cranial base and it gives off two branches anteriorly and posteriorly. So along with the nervous spinosus, you get the middle meningeal artery and the middle meningeal vein. So three things. I mean, obviously there's variants of this. In the, in some cases, the nervous spinosus just comes back up through the foramen of valley. And in them cases, normally this foramen spinosum is twice small, they were sometimes even absent. But it's this little mystery hole that always tricks people, especially in the exams, because people just, if, if they don't remember it, especially last minute, you would think the three holes in order correspond to the three branches of the trigeminal nerve, which is located very close by. In reality, it isn't like that. So the nervous spinosum itself, the one that is a branch of the mandibular trunk or branch of the trigeminal nerve, when it re-enters, it gives off two divisions, the anterior division and the posterior division, uh, as it re-enters the foramen spinosum, you know, it supplies, you know, uh, the posterior half of the, the dura mater, you know, the, the layering of the brain. It also goes towards the mastoid cells in the mastoid process at the back. So don't get that confused. It's very easy to mix that up. The key is to remember it's all in the names, especially we start off with the first branch, cranial nerve, five branch one, ophthalmic nerve, leaving through the superior orbital fissure because it has to be near the eye socket. Everything else follows suit after that. I'm hoping that answers that question and I'm hoping that's made it a little bit more easier to remember.